Some years there are updates that completely suspend an entire category. Others you get something like the 399 US dollar plus Apple Watch Series 9 and 799 US dollar after two steady improvements that technically add up to the best Apple Watches we have ever seen. Just not by a whole lot and not if you have already got a recent Apple Watch model. It makes sense that 2023's updates are quite compared to last year when Apple effectively kicked down the door with not one, not two, but three new smartwatches. This year, the Series 9 and Ultra 2 are nearly identical in design to their predecessors, save new colors, strap options, and carbon neutral packaging. Instead, the big updates this year are the S9 SIP the addition of a second generation ultra wideband chip and watch os 10. the former promises a 30 percent faster gpu and a four core neural engine with twice the performance of the series 8 that in turn enables onboard c processing greater power efficiency and the handy double tap gesture the upgraded uwb chip enables precision finding much like air tags Meanwhile, watchOS 10 reintroduces widgets to Apple's smartwatch landscape. After a few months with watchOS 10 and about a week with the Series 9 and Ultra 2, I genuinely like the new updates, but whether the latest Apple Watches are the best options for iOS users isn't the point anymore. They are, the real questions are whether the new updates are worth the cost to upgrade, and if you are going to buy a new Apple Watch, which one makes the most sense for you? The Aluminium Series 9 comes in a new pink color and as far as design goes, that's all that's visibly new. Otherwise, you are looking at the same design and 41mm by 45mm sizes as the Series 8 and the Series 7 before that. Pink is easily the best new color Apple's introduced for the watch in years. First, it's actually pink unlike the green Series 7, which only looked green if the light hit just right. Second, this is the year of our queen and savior Barbie. Technically, it's more millennium pink than Barbie pink, but that's probably a good thing. Normally, I catch about how Apple shies away from saturated color, but the extra subtlety here makes for a more versatile watch. Depending on the strap, you can either emphasize or de-emphasize the pinkness for whatever the situation calls for. The Ultra 2 is even harder to differentiate from the Ultra when I got my hands on at Apple Park, a representative advised I store my Ultra in my bag lest I accidentally leave it behind. Even the back crystal on the Ultra 2 just reads Ultra unlike the series watches which always specify which series they are. This entire week, I have had really on very minimal signs of wear and tear on my original Ultra to tell these two watches apart. Even less visible is the fact that Apple is using more recycled materials in both the Series 9 and Ultra 2. The sport loop, for example, is made of 82% recycled yarn, up from 0%. The aluminum Series 9 is made from 100% recycled aluminum, while the Ultra 2 is made from 95% recycled titanium. The speckled flex in silicone Nike straps you will see throughout this review are also recycled. Apple also sent me its fine oven strap which is made of 68% post-consumer recycled material and is meant to act as a leather alternative cause Apple doesn't do leather anymore. Fine oven is fine, it's kinda like sewed, soft and little fuzzy if you scrap it with a nail. It shows the scratch like sewed wood. It's hard to say whether it will develop a patina, as I simply haven't had it long enough. But I wouldn't recommend working out on it. I thought the strap was fetching on my stainless steel 45mm review unit, but the texture was a lot more polarizing among my co-workers. Most said they aren't fans but couldn't attribute why. If you are debating getting one, I would swing by an Apple store first to get a feel for it first. 
I never like it when gadget companies say a new processor makes things a lot better, unless you have a very laggy device. Minute improvements in performance are hard for the average person to see. Granted, processor specs matter more with Android smartwatches because they have historically been plugged by laggy screens and performance issues. But with the Apple Watch, this has been less of a problem. That said, there are a few instances where you can see the slight difference the S9 makes. First off, the new improved neural engine on the S9 chip means Siri processing happens on device. That it turn properly leads to 25% better dictation and the ability to issue Siri commands when offline. Later this year, you will also be able to ask Siri health related queries. To text the improved Siri, I ran two experiments. First, I dictated several long texts, tongue twisters, as well as Bohemian Rhapsody and Alphabet Arabic's lyrics and sent them to my best friend. For the tongue twister and song lyrics, I simultaneously dictated to an S8 powered Ultra and S9 powered Series 9. You can check the gallery above the screenshot of the results. It's impressive that both watches got about 95% accuracy, but I didn't see a huge difference between the results. With text featuring Korean words, Siri did an admirable job for more common words like bulgogi, but still messed up some names of our favorite K-pop singers and actors. It's not a perfect test, but for me that means I still have to educate clearly when using foreign words in English. AKA Conlish that said I have used actor Mahashala Ali name as a Siri litmus test over the past few years back in 2018 and 2019 Siri would often get tripped up on it. I am happy to say this year it nailed it 100% of the time. What might be more useful in this fact that you can issue Siri basic tasks when you have no internet or cellular connectivity. For example, I was able to ask Siri to set timers and workouts with airplane mode enabled both on the watch and on my iPhone. Say your laundry room is in the basement, your hands are full with a laundry basket and you forgot your iPhone upstairs. You can now ask Siri to set a timer and not to worry about it. This won't work 100% of the time when Siri has to pull information from the internet. However, but if you do get a weather update preloaded from when you had internet, I found that Siri can still give you an update. The S9 chip also results in greater power savings, but you should already know that Apple Siri invested that somewhere other than better battery life. In this case, Apple decided to make the displays brighter. The Series 9 now goes up to 2000 nits from 1000 nits, while the Ultra 2 is 50% brighter at 3000 nits. Indoors and outdoors, it's difficult to tell the difference if you don't have older models on hand for comparison. And even if you do as I did, it can still be difficult to tell under certain lightning conditions. That's because Apple makes ample use of the ambient line sensor just because you can manipulate the Series 9 or Ultra 2 to go up to a maximum brightness doesn't mean the watch is giving you everything it's got. It's dependent on your environment which is to give your eyes a break and save battery. You are most likely to see the difference outside on a very sunny day. Iterative updates aren't bad, they are just not flashy, but that's the biggest problem facing the Series 9 and Ultra 2. These are the best smartwatches Apple's ever made, but while the updates do make the overall experience better, it's like paying another dollar to add an extra toppling to your pizza. For some people, that makes the pizza. For others, it's nice but really not necessary and of course the smartwatches cost hundreds of dollars. If you have a Series 7 or later, you don't really need to update. For owners with a Series 5 or earlier, it might be worth it since you will get a bigger screen, several new sensors and a processing bump. Series 6 owners are the ones I see being most on the fence and to those folks, I mostly encourage upgrades if your battery life isn't cutting it anymore. For folks with an ultra seriously cool your jets, you are getting the modular ultra watch face with watch OS 10 and 3000 nits versus 2000 nits. Does it make a huge difference?
Otherwise, the biggest case I can make for an upgrade is if you must have double tap either because you have got minor dexterity issue or think it will be the coolest thing since sliced bread. If you were on the fence, I suggest trying assistive touch out for an afternoon to see whether you like the idea of using gesture. That said, if you don't often find yourself tapping your Apple Watch with your nose, that probably isn't a feature you'd need right away. But speaking frankly, Apple did not make these watches for folks looking to upgrade. It made them for people who don't have an Apple Watch already and it's still true that the majority of people buying Apple Watches each year are new to the platform. For those folks, these are the latest and greatest will until next year.